أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم My brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope and I pray that you're well and I hope and I pray Ramadan is treating you good and you're enjoying not just the blessings of Ramadan but also the blessings that Allah is giving you for being together with your family. Family is the most important thing that we can ever have. And this opportunity to be at home with your family is the greatest one that I have ever experienced in my last 20 years of public life and Ramadan and fasting. I'm very blessed and very grateful that Allah has given me the chance to break my fast with my family every day, have suhoor every day with them, pray as many prayers as possible with them in congregation, and spend a lot of quality time in between the work and everything that we do to be with our family, with our children, with our wife, with our husband. And if you're living with your parents, with your parents and any other members of your family, it is a great blessing and an honor. My brothers and sisters, today I want to talk about rely on Allah, but tie your camels first. In the Quran, we find Allah says, And place your trust in Allah, for none is as worthy of trust as Allah Azza wa Jal. Remember, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا The concept of tawakkul has been misunderstood by Muslims often. And I would like to explain that today in the, so that we can, of course, rely on Allah as we should rely on Him. And I would like us to all understand that tawakkul has got two sides. One is to rely on Allah and the other is to do your bit. That's why the title today is Rely on Allah, but also tie your camel. My brothers and sisters, a man came to Rasul and he said, Ya Rasulullah, should I tie my camels first or should I rely on Allah? According to other narrations, Prophet Sallallahu saw a man leave his camel outside to come and see him. Prophet said to him, did you tie your camel? The man said, no. I relied on Allah, Prophet said, go and tie your camel first and then rely on Allah. We find in Surah Al-Imran, Allah saying, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ This is describing Battle of Uhud and the aftermath of it. Our beloved Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been defined here in this particular verse that the companions, despite the fact that they deserted the battlefield, despite the fact that they caused mutiny, despite the fact that they left our beloved Prophet unprotected, he was injured, despite the fact that they disobeyed orders, despite the fact that the world and the glitter and the glamour of wanting wealth overtook them. My brothers and sisters, Allah says to Muhammad Sallallahu oh Muhammad, and it is, it was by the grace of Allah that you did deal people gently and with your followers. For if it had been that you've been harsh and hard of heart, they would indeed have broken away from you. So pardon them, then you, and pray that they be forgiven and take counsel with them on all their affairs, especially the public concerns. Then you have decided on a matter, when you have decided on a matter, rely on Allah. And Allah loves those who rely on Allah. My brothers and sisters, loving Allah is one thing. Allah loving you is something different. And Allah loves people who rely on Him. Those who rely on Him and understand the concept of reliance properly. In Surah 5, verse 23, Allah says, And Allah, in whom you place your trust first, if you are, sorry, and in Allah, you must place your trust if you are truly believers. Allah in the, in the Quran also says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Believers are only they whose hearts tremble with awe whenever Allah's name is mentioned and whose Faith is strengthened whenever his message are, messages are conveyed unto them. And who in their sustainer place their full trust. 
وعلى الله وعلى ربهم يتوكلون and on Allah they place their full trust in the Quran we also find where Allah Azza wa Jal is keeping the re- uh, keep repeating this message that you must rely on Allah you must rely on Allah for relying on Allah is your only way forward brothers and sisters Allah Azza wa Jal has reminded us various in the various verses of the Quran the importance of tawakkul the importance of relying on him there is a there is a hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi that I would like to narrate to you Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu said while we were in the cave fleeing Mecca I said to prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if one of them were to look down they would see our feet and prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to me Abu Bakr what do you think of the two the third with them is Allah what do you think Abu Bakr of course felt very comforted that at the depth of those despairing moment when they were fleeing their homes from persecution a threat on the life of beloved prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's old life remember when he came out of his house he saw his house is surrounded by the by the makkans who had decided to kill him conspire to destroy him conspire to eliminate him forever and thus destroy the message of islam that's what they thought when he came out he saw them surrounding his house and he knew they were planning to kill him he allahu akbar allah blessed him allah guided him allah blinded those who were around him he sneaked or walked right between them them did not they did not even see him rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to abu bakr's house and knocked on his door abu bakr was waiting and ready both the companions both the friends they left together prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and abu bakr they left together and they went to hide in a cave and in that cave while they were hiding abu bakr was terrified what if they find muhammad what if they catch us if they find our beloved prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he will be persecuted he will be killed what if they find this will be the end of islam this will be end of everything that we have done abu bakr was terrified in fact he said to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam o prophet of allah if they bend down they can see us this indicates that some people were walking around and abu bakr could hear their footsteps in fact there is a very powerful narration about suraqa suraqa was a very famous arab tracker who could track people down wherever they were and he could smell people so he was looking for the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was following on the announcement of abu jahl abu jahl said anyone who can catch muhammad dead or alive we will give him 100 camels in return so raqa was very enticed by the prospect of having 100 camels my brothers and sisters those days each of those camels would be measured at or each of those camels would be considered to be at the value of the most expensive car that you can ever imagine what's the most expensive car you can imagine in our time imagine that to be the value of a camel for the arabs of the time of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in fact in some arab countries camels still trade at a very high price anyway rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam was hiding in the cave with abu bakr and suraqa was looking for the prophet of allah and he was about to catch them he was on his horse back it is said he came closer and closer but as he approached the cave his horse stopped galloping anymore his horse stopped going any further he was perturbed by what had happened and my brothers and sisters he came out looking for the prophet and prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to suraqa suraqa put your so uh, spear down why have you come here i've come you come here to capture you o muhammad is it because you want to take 100 camels suraqa said yes prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to suraqa oh suraqa what if i gave you a promise of the bracelet and the uh, cloak and the gold and the silver and the diamond and the jewelries of the persian emperor would you leave us alone and not tell the quraish the makkans where i am where we are for some reason suraqa was convinced by this promise and he left the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he came back it is said in the history that later on when rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam had passed away in the time of umar al-khattab radiyallahu anhu muslims conquered the persian emperor empire rasul uh, umar al-khattab radiyallahu anhu was making public announcements saying where is suraqa where is suraqa today where is suraqa today people said ya umar why are you asking for suraqa when suraqa came umar al-khattab gave him the cloak and the royal jewelry of uh, persian emperor and he said rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam made this promise to you in front of abu bakr now abu bakr told me 
Heard is the promise, Ya Suraqa. Persian Empire has fallen. And the truth is the words of Allah's Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has come true. Here is your promise. Good. Suraqa took it. But he returned it to Umar al Khattab saying, Ya Umar, I don't need this. Give it and keep it for the Muslims so that they can use it for the well being of the collective society. It was so expensive. Imagine the, um, what the queen wears if her clothes and sisters, when the Sussan said to Al Bakr, Al Bakr, imagine, can you, what would you think of two with whom Allah is the third? My brothers and sisters, it's called reliance on Allah. Prophet of Allah had absolute trust and faith in Allah. He was making the migration. He did his job. Now he left it to Allah. He left his home. His companions had already arrived in Medina. He left in the depth of darkness. He hid in a cave, protecting himself from the, uh, uh, from the hot pursuit of the Meccans. He did his part. He tied his camel, as they say. And he relied on Allah. And Allah turned, melted the heart of Suraqa. Not only did he melt the heart of Suraqa, but the foretelling of Rasulullah about Persian emperor falling, Persian empire falling, came true. My brothers and sisters, this is the truth of reliance on Allah. When you rely on Allah and do your bit, Allah will do his part. If you don't do your bit, then you are insulting Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's what we need to all be aware of. Not to insult Allah. Not to insult logic and intelligence. We are a group of people, human beings with intelligence. We have been given knowledge and abilities to judge between right and wrong. So tawakkul must come with our part. Our part of doing our bit. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu reported in a Tirmidhi, reported by Tirmidhi, he said, I heard Rasulullah say, if you all depend on Allah with the right dependence, he would certainly give you provisions as he gives it to the birds. When they go out every morning hungry, but return in the evening with their bellies full. Allahu Akbar, my brothers and sisters, Umar ibn Khattab is reminding us that if you're looking for your provision, halal earning, then if you rely on Allah and you go out to work hard, like the birds do, they leave in the morning hungry. They don't have a job. They don't have a fixed place from where they can earn their living. But they fly around and they pick up their provisions. They come back full stomach. Not only full stomach, able to feed their chicks if they have got any. If we as believers have the same reliance on Allah, if we as believers believe in Allah's words in the same way, we will also leave every morning and go and earn our halal, do our bit, and Allah will do his bit. My brothers and sisters, doing our bit requires all of us and our diligent approach to becoming more and more reliant on Allah and becoming empowered by this belief that the more we rely on Allah, the more likely we will get the results that we want. But we have to put our effort into it, our work into it. Another hadith we find in <clears throat> in, in Al-Hakim, where it says, whoever is pleased to be the strongest amongst people in Iman, let them, then let them put their tawakkul on Allah. If you want to be the strongest among people with Iman, then have reliance on Allah. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu reported, a man said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, should I, tie camel my ta my, should I tie my camel or should I trust in Allah? Rasulullah said, you should tie your camel and you should trust in Allah. For both are important, my brothers and sisters. So let me define to you what tawakkul is. The word tawakkul is from the Arabic word wakala, which literally means to give yourself to somebody or something. Tawakkul means to give ourselves completely in the hands of Allah, to have complete reliance on Allah. The meaning of this word includes reliance, dependence, confidence, and full trust in Allah. Reliance on Allah depends on Allah, dependence on Allah, confidence in Allah, and trust in Allah alone, nobody else. My brothers and sisters, this is very different to, for, to submission. As Muslims, we submit to Allah, yes. Tawakkul is everything to do with placing our absolute trust over all our affairs on Allah. Not just about submitting in worship, but having full trust of all our affairs on Allah. Tawakkul is a light for our hearts and a means for us to seek nearness to Allah 
in a manner that absolutely shows nothing else can be achieved except him. The essence of this quality of the heart is built upon two very important pillars. Dependence on Allah and trust in Allah. We, we may often trust a person without necessarily depending on them. Likewise, we may depend on a person not necessarily trusting them. However, when it comes to Allah Azza wa Jalla, our Lord, our Rabb, both exist simultaneously. My brothers and sisters, tawakkul means that a person in the face of difficulties in life, enmity and troubles of opponents, the tangles of existence with which hinder our journey towards our objective, and instances wherein we find ourselves unable to untie the knots, we take Allah as our support. At the same time, we do our bit. We put our efforts, our endeavors. My brothers and sisters, rather in those instances wherein he who possesses the strength to perform the work, he looks upon Allah as the fundamental influencing force. This is because in the eye of a true believer, one who believes in Allah Azza wa Jal, absolutely and without a shadow of a doubt, Allah's strength and source is unparalleled and incomparable. My brothers and sisters, I have said to you what tawakkul is. Let me summarize what tawakkul really means. Tawakkul is a psychological switch in our brain, in our mind, of change of our perception. It is a spiritual belief in our heart that changes our feeling. It is recognition of the fact that the creations of Allah can neither harm you nor yield any benefit for you. It is the acceptance of the reality that the creations of Allah can neither grant you anything worthy nor can they deprive you of anything worthy. It is total and absolute devotion to Allah alone. It is to suspend all hopes from anybody and hope in Allah only, my brothers and sisters. Let me cite you a beautiful story. I want you to remember Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. When Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam had opposed his father about fire worshipping, idol worshipping rather, and his father was building idols with his own hand, Ibrahim said to his father, Oh my father, why do you worship a thing that can neither harm or benefit itself or protect itself, nor you? His father was very upset. We know the entire story of Ibrahim challenging the way of the people who are idol worshippers. Ibrahim's father, local people, even the king, they took displeasure and dislike of Ibrahim. And they wanted to punish him for his message. His message of heresy as far as they're concerned. He was preaching and inviting people to a new religion that local people did not like. So they decided to burn him. His family watched. All people gathered the wood from the surrounding forests and put it together in a big pit, the biggest of pits that has ever been seen. They lit a fire that was so big that they could not even go near it. Ibrahim was watching. I want you to imagine what was going through Ibrahim. In Ibrahim, Prophet of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam, in his mind, he must be terrified. He must have been thinking, oh my Lord, what is going to happen to me? They're going to throw me in that fire. He could see it. He could smell it. He could hear the crackling of the burning wood. He could see the billowing of the smoke. He could smell. He was getting ready for it. They catapulted him into the middle of the fire, the hottest part of the fire. When he landed in the middle of the fire, normally you and I would be screaming our life, probably would be dead before we even land. But as Ibrahim was being thrown in the fire, guess what he said? He said, Hasbun Allahu wa ni'ma al wakil. Hasbun Allahu wa ni'ma al wakil. Hasbun, hasbun Allahu wa ni'ma al wakil, he said. Ibrahim said, Allahu Akbar, he said, when Ibrahim was being thrown in the fire, he said to himself loudly, Allah is enough for us, for he is an excellent guardian. He is an excellent guardian. My brothers and sisters, Allah is sufficient for us. Hasbun Allah. 
Allah is sufficient for all of us. Ibrahim did not rely on anybody else. Ibrahim did not worry about anybody else. Ibrahim did not ask, did not seek a compromise, did not ask people to forgive him, did not ask the king to forgive him, did not say to the king, please, can we reconcile? Can we compromise? Can we do something in between? Can we capitulate? Ibrahim والسلام, stayed resolute. He did not agree to compromise. He did nothing. He continued his mission. He was polite. He was good. He was diligent. And he stood his ground. What did Allah say to the fire when Ibrahim landed on that fire in the middle of it? He said, قُلْ يَا نَارُ كُونِي بَرْضًا وَسَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ O fire, be cool and gentle on Ibrahim today. O fire, be cool and gentle on Ibrahim today. Allahu Akbar, my brothers and sisters, Allah changed the nature of fire because Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam relied on Allah. He says, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Remember this, my brothers and sisters, say it again and again. Allah is sufficient for us. For Allah is the most excellent protector, guardian. The most excellent protector, the most amazing guardian. Ibrahim did his bit, my brothers and sisters. He tied his camel. He did not compromise. He did not give up. He did not change his way. He continued on the mission of truth. And what came in his direction, Allah changed the nature of the fire. Let me give you another story of Sayyidina Musa والسلام, to make you understand, illustrate the point I'm making about tawakkul. Sayyidina Musa والسلام, and his people, Bani Israel, have been a captive of the Pharaoh of Egypt for years and years. Under captivity, Bani Israel had lost all sense of self-esteem, confidence, power. They were a broken people, people who were afraid, people who did not know where to go, how to do things. They were completely and utterly enslaved mentally and physically by the Pharaoh and his troops. Brutal enslavement. Sayyidina Musa والسلام, was born in that family. In that family of Bani Israel who are also living under captivity. And Allah made Musa والسلام, live in Pharaoh's house, being nursed by his own mother, given tarbiyah and training and development by his own mother. The true teachings of Ibrahim, true teachings of Dawood, David, the previous prophets, the teaching of Allah. And Musa was growing up to become a prophet of Allah. والسلام, so when Musa والسلام, was convincing his people about freedom and what Allah has prepared for them, he was able to gather the people of Bani Israel and convince them about his mission, convince them about his work, about the blessings of Allah that is awaiting them. And they all marched out of Egypt because they wanted to break the shackle that had been enslaving them, keeping them together in and under the complete imprisonment, no freedom under the reign of a tyrant called Pharaoh. As they were marching out, they left Musa leading them all the way. And they came, after walking many days, they arrived in front of the Red Sea. In front of the Red Sea, beyond the Red Sea, is their promised land of freedom. Musa is standing there. Bani Israel, has, they have camped there. They're all getting worried. They know that the troops will very soon come very close. As they are camping, they're getting frustrated, agitated, anxious, nervous, and fearful. They're telling Musa, والسلام, come on, Musa, do something. We can't be here. And as the time passes, they see in the horizon massive cloud forming in the, the desert, the sand gathering together. They knew instantly the troops of Pharaoh is not very far away from here. They became terrified. They came to Musa and they started pressing Musa, saying, oh, Musa, come on, do something. And Musa والسلام, told them, and he said to his people, O oh, my people, if you truly believe in Allah, place your trust in him. If you have truly surrendered yourself unto Allah, whereupon his people answered, O oh, Musa, فَقَالُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْ فِتْنَةً لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ وَنَجِّنَا بِرَحْمَتِكَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ They said, O oh, Allah, we have placed our trust on you. Or sustainer, make us not a plaything for those who are evil. And save us by your grace from the denies of the truth. 
And Allah told Musa, oh Musa, you've walked all the way. You're freed your people already. You have broken their mindset. Now you've got the Red Sea in front of you. You have relied on me. You have relied on me, Musa. And your people have said, Allahi tawakkalna. They said, Allahi tawakkalna. They said, Allahi tawakkalna. We rely on Allah completely. Allah said to Musa, now, O Musa, throw your stick in the sea. And Musa threw his stick in the sea. What happened to the sea? The sea parted, my brothers and sisters. And Musa and his people were able to cross. They were able to cross. They crossed over to the other side. And when Pharaoh and his troops followed, they were drowned in the sea. When you rely on Allah, Allah can be with you. When you rely on Allah, Allah can change the nature of danger that is in front of you to becoming comfortable and beneficial for you like he did to Ibrahim. When you rely on Allah, Allah can remove the most unsurmountable obstacle in front of you like he did to Musa salam, by parting the sea. My brothers and sisters, Allah is capable of doing everything for your and my benefit as long as we have full reliance on Allah, complete reliance on Allah. So how do we develop tawakkul in this context, brothers and sisters, is what I want to talk about right now. The way to develop tawakkul in Allah, firstly, is to believe in Allah's words. If I, tell, if I tell you that there is a fire there, and if you trust me, you will run away and say, oh my God, there's a fire, let me save myself. If you trust somebody and they tell you something, you believe in them. Allah is saying, believe in me, O oh my servant. My words are that I am your best provider. I am your best protector. And I will be with you all the way. Rely on me. Rely on me. Inna Allah yuhibbul mutawakkilin. Allah loves those people who rely on him. Trust him. They depend on him. They have confidence in Allah. They can completely have their reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal. So have that mental switch. Believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is the only one you can rely on. He's the only one who can make things happen for you. Secondly, my brothers and sisters, combine reliance with your action. If you don't combine your reliance with action, you are insulting Allah. Imagine you're sitting on your backside and your exam is just around the corner. You're wasting your time watching films on Netflix, perhaps, or watching YouTube or social media. You're just wasting time. You're play playing with your friends, talking to them, and your exam is tomorrow or day after. You will not pass. You can make all the dua the night before all you like. You will not pass. I can guarantee you, you will not pass. You have to do your bit. Tawakkul is not the same thing as tawakkul. Tawakkul is reliance on Allah. Tawakkul is when you don't do it. When you don't do your bit. My brothers and sisters, do your bit. We are told to do our work. When you are ill, go to the doctor and seek help from the doctor and also rely on Allah for cure. At the beginning of this Ramadan, my gum swelled up and I got very worried. I made dua saying, Ya Allah, I have got a lot of program to do. If my gum swells up anymore, I won't be able to talk. I called my dentist and I got medication straight away. And I have been taking medication and I've been making dua, both. It's healed, alhamdulillah. My brothers and sisters, you've been looking for a job. Do the search, do the hard work. Look for all alternatives, every option that there is. And Allah will do his bit once you do yours. Make dua, Ya Allah, give me the best job in the world. You're looking for a wife or a husband. You're sitting at home waiting for your husband or a wife to land from the sky. It's not going to happen. Allah is not going to come and spoon feed you with food when you're hungry. Allah is not going to take you out of your bed when you're lazy and doing nothing. Allah is not going to change your destiny unless you change what is within you first. My brothers and sisters, tawakkul number two, as I said, combine tawakkul with your work. Combine tawakkul with your action. Otherwise, you are insulting Allah. Those people who say, I have tawakkul on Allah and do no action, they're insulting Allah. Don't insult Allah. And thirdly, my brothers and sisters, accept your destiny. Whatever has been written for you, after you've done your best, whatever happens, accept it. You did everything possible to get to your destination. You left on time. In fact, you left before time. But en route, the train broke down. That's not up to you. You were going somewhere. Something happened. Your car broke down. There was a blockage on the road. You left on time. That's your bit. You left before time, keeping some contingency on your hand. You've done your bit. 
You do your hard work to look for a job. That's your bit. You, look your, you do your hard work to find a spouse. That's your bit. You do your bit first. And Allah will do his. And once you've done your bit, whatever outcome that there is, accept it. For that outcome is the best outcome for you. Believe in it. Accept it. Because whatever plan Allah makes is the best of plan. Allah he says in the Quran, وَمَا كَرُوا وَمَا كَرَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ they plan and Allah plans. And Allah is the best of planner. Brothers and sisters, many of us make lots of many, many plans in life. Did we any, did anybody plan for this coronavirus? No, we didn't. Did we plan that we'll be all in a lockdown for three months? No, we didn't. Did we plan the whole global world? Did they plan that the economy will have to shut down? Countries will have to shut down. Airplanes have to shut down. Transportation has to shut down. School, colleges, works, everything has to stop. Did anybody plan like that? No. Allah has his plan, and there is always khair in it, always good in it. The best thing that's come out of this lockdown is that we're spending more time at home. The best thing that's come out of this plan is that we're studying more, or reflecting more, and we're being able to perform Ramadan in an amazing way like we've never done before. Brothers and sisters, tawakkul on Allah requires these three elements. Believe in Allah's words, combine reliance with action, and accept your destiny. So let me finish what I've been saying by reminding you what I said. Remember what tawakkal ala Allah wa kafa billahi wakila. And remember Ibrahim's dua. Hasbun Allah wa ni'ma al-wakil. Hasbun Allah wa ni'ma al-wakil. Hasbun Allah wa ni'ma al-wakil. My brothers and sisters, I'd like to finish here. But I'd like to make a dua for the best of all of us. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa al-akhimatu al-muttaqeen wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Ya Allah, ya arham ar-rahimin, most kind, most merciful, we ask you to bless us, ya Allah. We ask you to give us the best of this world in the hereafter. Ya Allah, Rabbana, atina fi dunia hasana, wa fi al-akhirati hasana, wa qina athab al-nar. Ya arham ar-rahimin, ya akram ala akramin, we ask you to give us the forgiveness that we seek in the month of Ramadan. Rabbana, zalamna anfusana, wa in lam taghfir lana, وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَا كُونَنَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Ya Allah, we have wronged our souls. Ya Allah, if you do not forgive us, and if you do not have mercy on us, we will always be lost. Ya Allah, we have wronged ourselves. Please forgive our sins, Ya Rabb. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, forgive us for our sins, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Akramul Akramin, do not allow our hearts to be misguided once you have guided us, Ya Allah. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِي قُلُوبَنَا بَعَدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَحَبْ لَنَا مِن لَدٌ once you have allowed to be guided, Ya Alhamdulillah Rahimin. Ya Akramul Akramin, have mercy on our families, Ya Allah. Protect them, Ya Allah. Rabbana hablana min azwajina. Wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yunin wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Rabbana hablana min azwajina. Wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yunin wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Ya Allah, Ya Akramul Akramin, bring from our families the best progeny that we have and the world deserves, Ya Allah. Bring from our families, from our children, leaders of tomorrow, Ya Allah. Ya Akramul Akramin, make them the coolness of our eyes, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamul Rahimin, have mercy on our parents. Rabbir Hamhuma, Kama Rabbayani Sahira. Rabbir Hamhuma, Kama Rabbayani Sahira. Ya Arhamul Rahimin, those of us who have lost our parents, have mercy on their souls. Forgive them and grant them the highest of paradise, Ya Allah. For those of us who have our parents alive, Ya Arhamul Rahimin, give them Hayatan Tayyiba, Ya Allah. Give them Hayatan Tayyiba, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamul Rahimin, give us Shifa from your Shifa, Ya Shafi Al Amrad. اللهم رب الناس اذهب البأس واشفي أنت الشافي لا شفاء لا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر سقبا يا الله you are the provider of all شفاء you are the provider the cure of all illnesses يا الله remove all the illnesses permanently from ourselves يا أرحم الراحمين يا أكرم الأكرمين give us your شفاء يا أرحم الراحمين give us شفاء physically give us شفاء emotionally give us شفاء spiritually يا الله يا أكرم الأكرمين strengthen this أمة يا الله do not burden us for, with more burdens than we can take, Ya Allah. Do not test us with burdens that we cannot take, Ya Allah. Rabbana, la tuzi quluba, Rabbana, Rabbana, wa la tuhammin la ma la taqatana bih. Wa'afu anna, wa'afir lana, warhamna, anta maulana, fansuna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Rabbana, taqabal minna, inna kanta samu al-alim. Wa tuba alayna, ya maulana, inna kanta tawabu al-rahim. Wa fadzu subhan rabbika rabbi al-izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. My brothers and sisters, so you should be very uh, grateful to Allah for this opportunity that we are being able to broadcast from our masajids even though our masajids are closed. Today, 
This message was broadcast live from the Whiteman Road Mosque in London. And then Greed's, sorry, Leeds Grand Mosque. Leeds Grand Mosque, it also was broadcasting live from both the mosques, mashallah. We should be in connections with our mosques. Please, brothers and sisters, don't forget to donate for both of those mosques. Whiteman Road Mosque is still here, hasn't gone. And without your donation and your support, they can't survive. Leeds Grand Mosque is still there and will be there for you once the lockdown is over. Please donate for Leeds Grand Mosque too. Both of those mosques are my favorite mosques. Whenever I go to Leeds, you know I come there. You know I pray there. I have also led Jum'ah there. And I've had the greatest opportunity and honor to give talks there. And I do lots of program in Whiteman Road Mosque too. So please support these amazing mosques and all mosques up and down the country. And make dua for those people who are running them, even though we're not there to help and support them. May Allah protect us all. And inshallah, you pray your duhar prayer after this. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.